Amen. Love it. All right. What's up, guys? Hope you're feeling alive right now. I'm Micah Keneally. And I'm Josiah Keneally, and we're your hosts. Of the What Josiah? Young Adults Today podcast, yes. where we talk about reaching the next generation in our world today. Micah, always good to spend time with you. I know. I'm down two coffees already. It is sun is shining here. It is only probably 20 degrees, though, so it is deceiving. Our kid wants to go out and play, but you know what? We can't go play with the sidewalk chalk because it's just cold. A little so, chilly, but we're warm on the inside. That's right. And uh, man, new episodes drop really to help design you, um, for the listener, to start your week off strong. So yes. thanks for subscribing, mm-hmm. rating, reviewing, wherever you listen to these podcasts, and for sharing this with other leaders. That helps us reach more listeners with the message of young adults today. And we're joined by our friend Kyle Sawyer. How are you? Man, so glad to be with you guys. And uh, listen, you talk about the weather. It's like in the 80s here. I can see the mountains. It's crazy. Um, it's a rough day. So I'm sorry. I know it's so much out of stuff with the board. So uh, not even helping me. Oh, I love it. Hey, take advantage of that weather because we ain't, we're not getting it anytime soon by the feels of it. <laughs> I love it. And hey, for your if you're listening today, Kyle mm-hmm. Sawyer is the young adults pastor at Visalia First with V1 Young Adults, and God is on the move in mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. my friend, through you, and uh, it's been a joy connecting almost weekly the past few months. Feel like there's such mm-hmm. a friendship that's been formed, and that's been truly a blessing in my life. And so I'm pumped for the listener to get to spend time with you as well as for us mm-hmm. to hang together right now. so good i don't know i lost you guys and uh we're still here can you hear us okay i can hear you now sorry oh perfect in my hand i'm sorry if we have to restart i'm messing this up um how about now good how we doing kyle hey there sorry you guys good yeah, yeah that's should perfect. we try that again? I'll just read your bio again, and I'll maybe work on some okay. editing behind the scenes. But I'll try it again, and if we need to restart, we can. I think it was my internet there here, so I apologize. Hey, okay, we're good. Kyle Sawyer, by the way, if you're tuning in, is the young adults pastor at Visalia mm-hmm. First with V1 Young Adults. And bro, God's on the move in you, through you, in your life, in your ministry. And we've been connecting as friends almost weekly for the past few months, and I'm grateful for that. You're a blessing in my life. So it's going to be fun to hang and for the listener to have the joy to mm-hmm. spend time with you as well. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. I'm thankful for our friendship and the connection and um Just glad to be with you guys today. It is exciting. And so, bro, do you want to launch us with just some of your story, your journey of life, leadership, Mm -hmm. ministry? Yeah. So for me, uh, all this really began in my life. I was about 14 years old and um, gave my heart to Jesus at a a church there in in our town in Georgia. And um, God just began to, to birth something in my heart. And so, of course, served in youth ministry for many years during that time, even though I was a youth myself, uh, God kind of opened up an opportunity for me to lead. And of course, went off to Bible college at uh, Emmanuel College there in Georgia. And uh, as I graduated, I wasn't real sure, you know, what do I want to do with my life? Obviously, I knew ministry was God's calling, but where and and what, what's that going to look like? And so um, I served as an executive pastor for about nine years in Georgia there and loved it, you know, enjoyed everything that we were doing. But one day, my wife and I knew young adult ministry was calling our name. And uh, we were, you know, freshly married, but we were open to moving. And I'll never forget asking my wife, uh, are you willing to move anywhere? And uh, her response was, where's anywhere? And so uh, <laughs> California was where God had just kind of opened up an opportunity. We began to pursue it. We both fell in love with uh, the Central Valley where we're located now. And God just opened the door wide for us to uh, lead V1 Young Adults. And honestly, it's the privilege and the honor of our life to get to do what we're doing. And I uh, love leading other leaders, leading our team, seeing young adults give their heart to Jesus, and ultimately, you know, find their purpose. And uh, just like I did at, at 14 years old. So that's what I'm, I'm loving right now. 
I love it, Kyle. Thank you so much for sharing that. And God bless your wife for going anywhere. When you said anywhere, are you willing to go anywhere? And yeah. I think God really honors that when we are leaders or people or just willing bodies that are saying yes to him, like he will lead, he will guide, and he will bless that process. And I'm sure God is going to continue to bless you as you guys continue to say yes to young adults and yes to leadership. And even for the listener, maybe you're at a crossroads right now as a listener and you're like, I have two significant choices before me. I can go left or I can go right. And sometimes God gives us the freedom to choose one or the other. And so if you're listening today and you feel like you're at a crossroads or you're at a loss for words, what, what, what God wants to do, just keep saying yes, keep leaning in and seeing what God is doing. And Obviously, if you're listening, you're probably a leader or a young adult yourself who's passionate about young adults and the next generation. And Kyle, I'd be curious to hear this. This is my first time meeting you, which is an honor and privilege because Josiah's been talking about you um, in such wonderful ways for the last you know couple it. of months. He goes, you can't wait. I can't wait for you to meet okay. Kyle. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So finally, we are here today. <laughs> but Kyle, why do you believe that young adult ministry is so vital and important in this day and age? Yeah, I think, you know, when when you look at statistics, you see a generation that unfortunately is leaving the church, walking away from the church, especially uh, in those young years. You know, two thirds of young adults li literally leave the church. Um, and for us, I think that's a high calling, you know, that we've got uh, a mission and a mandate that we've got to do everything we can to keep them connected, uh, ultimately to Jesus, but also to the church. And um, you know, one thing that we do here at B1 Young Adults is we help young adults find their people, their place, and their purpose. Three things that I believe every young adult is chasing after and looking for. And so for us, it's been how can we help them find those three, three things? If we do that, ultimately, we believe that they'll stay connected to the church, uh, they will serve in the church, and ultimately, they'll uh, maybe find their spouse in the church. Who knows what God could do in their life, all because of helping them find just those three things. So for me, I think that's why it's vital and it's important. I know a lot of churches may not have this ministry, uh, but if you're listening, if you're a lead pastor or senior leader, uh, I would urge you, I would, I would encourage you to give birth to something that God would use greatly. So, Yes and amen. Yes. You know, one of our hearts and burdens and passions, and it doesn't need to all look the same at every church, but we do believe that mm -hmm. all 384,000 churches in America need to be reaching the next generation and mm -hmm. remember and include and emphasize the next generation mm -hmm. in their discipleship strategies. And so whether it is a young adult small group, a full-blown mm -hmm. network of small groups, like a young adult ministry, some gatherings, I think like Mark Batterson says, I'm inspired by him to say, you know what, let's try some things. It's called an experiment. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to do an experiment forever, but let's Let's, we we got to do something. And what you said about two-thirds exiting, not on our watch. We've got to do something. We can't stay here any longer. It's kind of right. like John Cotter said mm -hmm. from Harvard Business mm -hmm. Review. Like, our iceberg is melting. So we got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. We got to do something. We have to be inspired to change. And in addition to that, one of the things that I'm really praying about, but I haven't yet found many other people doing in their communities, is what I found out you're doing, and that is convening a network or a community of young adult ministry mm -hmm. leaders in your area in California. And um, we happen to have that, and we've been working on that for five, six years mm -hmm. in Minnesota, and there's just a unity around mm -hmm. the young adult ministry leaders in our state and we do a weekend together a conference together and right. and just there's friendships right. that are formed out we're in this thing yes. together and uh so to hear that is happening in california i'm it's like watch out praise god <laughs> and i rejoice with that and i pray that maybe somebody listening mm -hmm. to takes that and they're like you know what my city my state we need yeah. that and it could start with as yeah. simple as some DMs, some phone calls, some Facebook groups. But can you share why you started this and what it's been like and what God's doing? Yeah, if I'm honest, it really birthed out of um, when the pandemic happened and I just assumed this role and felt very much alone, if, if I'm honest. And I thought, how many other young adult pastors and leaders are feeling that same way? Uh, needing other people in their corner, encouraging them, strengthening them, uh, doing life with them. And, and so uh, it was birthed out of that, that notion that I said, we got to get these people together. And so we for formed the collab cohort, basically, that we have about 15 uh, young adult pastors and leaders that are part of that. We gather together. 
uh, at least once a quarter where we just get together, encourage each other, share ideas, um, have a meal together. And then of course, we just always are communicating with one another. We also just held our first uh, YA conference this past summer and, uh, you know, just pulling people together here in the Central Valley in California of all places like revivals breaking out amongst young adults. But I believe it was partly due to the network of young adult pastors that we have created. And I'll just speak for myself and say it's been life giving. It's been encouraging. Um, and if you're a leader listening right now, find a way to connect with those other young adult leaders in your area. Um, because I, I'll tell you this, it'll change your life and theirs for sure. That's so good. And I think it's just an answer to prayers. I think a lie that we as leaders can believe if we're doing young adult ministry to whatever degree, we feel like we're the only ones. Mm -hmm. What is everybody else doing? Is there anyone else? Um, if they, if there is anybody else, where are they at? How do I reach them? How do I, you know, if I'm a young woman or if I'm a young man and I've started something that God's burdened me with and he's trying to birth something out of this. And I think it's just fascinating to see there is revival happening. Even yes. in the midst of chaos and confusion in the world in which we live, God is still seated on his throne. He is still moving and young adults are still hungry. And yeah. we need to be leaders that are feeding them the truth. They need to be fed the word of mm -hmm. God. They need to be fed in a form of community. And if we have leaders have come to the end of ourselves and we realize I've talked to so many leaders, and this is why I'm saying this, is because I've talked to so many leaders, whether you're in the ministry world, the mission world, or volunteer world, and you're in a new city just trying to figure out life if you're 18 to 30 something. Mm -hmm. And I asked them this question, and this just breaks my heart because I'm like, what do you do outside of ministry? Like, who are your friends outside of the people mm -hmm. you are leading? Yeah. Who are you doing community with as a young adult married couple? Like, who are your friends? Like, when there's a death in the family, who's there? When there's a birth in the family, who's there? When there's tragedy that strikes, who's there? When you're rejoicing for a birthday party and you want to throw a party and you have nobody to invite, ah, who's there? Mm -hmm. And I think I've talked to so many young people who are in some form of leadership or ministry that are, they're lonely, mm -hmm. they're burdened out, or they're burdened, they, they're burnt out, they feel like nobody else is doing what they're doing, nobody else has that calling, and they don't know how to do community outside of the people that they're leading. So by the time they're 30, their new best friend has become the 18 year old because sports has joined them together and the heartbeat of Christ has joined them together. Well, we all know if you're leading people in that demographic, there are very different walks of life within that 12 years. Kids, marriage, divorce, um, more kids, um, singleness, college, career, like a lot of life can and does happen. And I guess for the listener today and the leader today, I would challenge you to start praying if you find yourself in this boat. And I think I've been there so I can speak into this of realizing and recognizing, wow, if something were to happen, do I feel like I have a tribe that can rally around me? Yeah. Do I have some girlfriends? Do we have our couple friends? Does Josiah have his guy friends that he can turn to? And if the answer is no, there's nobody, I want to pray for you and we have been praying for you, but I want you to start praying for yourself that God would bring those divine relationships, yeah. those divine opportunities that could truly last a lifetime. Because in ministry, you will find that there are situational relationships, circumstantial, there's lifelong, and then there's also the ones that are kind of built into our day to day until that job comes to an end or you or they transition out and you're like, whoa, wait, I thought I had a friend. You know, and it's like, yeah. so how do we as leaders, like you just said, Pastor Kyle, of realizing, wow, there are 15 people and pastors in my area that just need to do life together. Jesus had the 12. The yeah, 12 I, did life together. Yeah, I think, you know, it's great to know, you know, randomly I'll get a text, you know, just saying, hey, thank God for what you're doing. You're killing it. Like, keep going. Like that's like fuel in the tank, you know, and we all need it. And so uh, these people have become some of my dearest friends and, and we're doing that, you know, uh, reciprocating both of that to, to them and to me. I feel like it's been so life giving um, and I can't say enough about these leaders and what they're doing for the kingdom and the fact that we're not we're not in competition with one another. 
uh, you said something so good earlier, Micah, about the fact that we uh, we may, you know, we, we're working for the same team, you know, at the end of the day, and we're moving the ball down the field together. And so when one wins, we all win. And I think that's the key in ministry is for so long, it's been, uh, maybe it's felt like at least a, a competition. And I, I just pray that we as young adult leaders say, no, we're going to come together. We're going to empower one another. And we're going to see the kingdom uh, advance as a result of that partnership. Oh my gosh. I'm making notes, sorry. Yes and amen. <laughs> yes and amen. D- did you want to say that? Well, I just think one of our prayers, Pastor Kyle, is that you have already hit it. And it's, it's we're not in competition. We should be in collaboration. Yeah. Because as we r- reach closer to closer to the coming of Christ, we realize that things are not going to get better, right? And we mm-hmm. need each other. We need to know that there are other Christians out there doing the work and the will of God. We need to know the word of the, the Bible and needs to be impressed on our heart. And we need to actively be living out our faith each and every single day. And part of that is doing what it says in Matthew, like, we're going to baptize people and they're going to go on and we're going to reach our kingdom or the God's kingdom is ultimately the thing that we want to see changed and impacted and increased, right? We want to take as many people there as we can. Yeah. And we know that young adults is a huge, they're just influencers in general, right? They are, mm-hmm. they're living out their faith on college campuses. They may feel like they're alone in the classroom. They're alone in their families. They're raising themselves or they're raising their siblings and that just seems to be amplified more and more as time goes on but how we choose to lead the people god has placed before us and how we choose to collaborate with kingdom-minded people with a heaven-minded urgency i think that's the biggest thing that god's been pressing on my heart like the last five to seven years is an urgency for the kingdom-minded like kingdom-minded urgency like time is not forever in the sense of our time physically on earth so what and how are we going to be and play and not be the ball hog running down the court or on the field like how do we include everybody who's on this team because we can go further faster together and by the end of the day i want to say like okay lord i did it all in your name i did it in your name i did with what you gave me so pastor kyle i'd be curious to see and hear from you just for the listener who maybe we're in the Midwest, you're on the West Coast, but you're actually from Georgia. So there's a lot of dynamics when we kind of look across of how we, us three are just connected right now. But for the person who's maybe discouraged in their ministry, mm. who needs to be encouraged or is curious, like how in the world do you structure a ministry mm. to the degree that you are running in California or the little Bible study that's down the street with 10 of us where it's like, where are all the Christians, right? How does V1 Young Adults look? Like, what is your structure? How does it function? And how would you encourage maybe the person who is maybe in a similar boat than you, but maybe also just starting out? Can you speak to those different groups of people who could be listening today? Sure. I think there's a few keys, you know, that stick out to me. And one is simply this, and maybe this sounds old school, but it's simply, you know, you got to hear from God. Um, I think you've got to get along with God. You've got to get vision. Uh, um, and and if, if that's not your source, uh, be careful where you're getting it from, uh, because I think you stealing someone else's vision or trying to copy what someone else is doing is going to set you up ultimately, I think, uh, not for success. And so for you to get along with God and say, what is it you want us to do here? As you said, you know, I'm from Georgia, live in California. Uh, you guys are in the Midwest. What works here may not work somewhere else and what works somewhere else may not work here. But to realize that we're all doing our part in our context, our culture to reach the people that God's entrusted us with, you know, for us, we figured out that community is huge. And so we have a few things that we really focus on uh, at V1 Young Adults. And it all began when I came on. uh, I just felt so impressed to put the right people around myself. Um, I I know that I'm not a know-it-all. I want to be a learn-it-all. And let me see who can I bring around me, get in my circle, who is strong at something that maybe I'm not as strong at. Um, and, and let's do this together. There's no greater joy than getting to do this with people who just run their race and, and run the race with you ultimately in their gift. So putting the right team. So for us, it looks similar to this. And, and so we have a weekly gathering on Wednesday night, seven o'clock. Um, it's a full service. And, you know, we uh, from worship to the word to time of prayer, community, 
uh, we're in and out afterwards, you know, like there's, there's, those things are happening weekly. And then we just launched something we call crews, which are small groups that meet every other week that uh, people can be a part of and do life together. And we've been overwhelmed by the response, um, just people wanting to go deeper in their faith. And, and here's what I've learned with young adults, get them together as often as you can. Uh, if it's at the mall, if it's at the movie theater, if it's wherever it might be, um, they're longing to do life together. And so we've created what we call pop-ups and pop-ups happen uh, once a quarter and we're at a different location. Uh, every time, whether that be a coffee shop, like I said, the mall or somewhere else, we're doing life together. And there's no agenda to that other than just building community. Uh, we like to say it this way, that community is our pursuit. And so we're going to do that intentionally, uh, because I'll let you know this, if you're a leader listening, uh, it's either intentionally happen, happening or intentionally not happening. Uh, and so you've got to lead the way in that. And then we do this thing called rally nights. Rally nights is a night where we invite all of the people around us that maybe don't go to church, uh, they're on our college campus. We work with them. We're doing life. Maybe it's a friend or a family member uh, that we just want to say, hey, get in on what God's doing here at this community. And those nights have been overwhelming. Uh, we've seen so many people give their heart to Jesus, but also get plugged into um, young adults and the church at large. Um, one thing I'll say about V1 Young Adults, our heartbeat is that we don't want you just to belong to V1YA. We want you to belong to Visalia first or a church of some nature, whether that be, you know, another church or it be ours. Uh, we are a small room in a big house. So everything that we do, yeah, we want to help you grow in your faith. We want to help you build community. All of those things are true. But ultimately, we want you to give back to that church in some way, uh, giving, serving, doing life with the people on a Sunday morning. So that's been our focus as a ministry over the last several months. Awesome. So good. Oh my gosh, Kyle. And I love the different weekly service gatherings that are happening, the brand new crews, the pop-ups, the rally nights. Mm -hmm. I know you guys do conference and uh, camp. And uh, my question, I guess, comes back to discipleship. Mm -hmm. And I think it might tie in with crews just from our previous conversations. But I think that so many people are experimenting. Maybe they're starting with a weekly service or they're starting with small groups. But the goal is to meet the spiritual needs of young adults and then to minister to the relational needs as well. And a lot of life has happened for a lot of people the last two years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, in some ways, it feels like it's gone by in the blink of an eye. And in other ways, it feels like an entire lifetime mm -hmm. happened within two years. And so as people are lonely, as they're kind of ready to maybe start a new job or start a new turn over a new leaf to you know set mm -hmm. some goals and people are really hungry mm -hmm. for the things that matter most in life and for those of us as christian leaders that provides an amazing opportunity because that's what jesus is all about the mm -hmm. things that matter most his glory his name his kingdom mm -hmm. and heaven on earth you know here as it is in heaven and so i'd just be curious like what are you learning through launching crews and maybe what is the the vision or goal strategy and purpose around like gathering people in these crews mm -hmm. yeah so um crews launched about a month ago for us and we've had at least half of our attendance on wednesday nights they're also attending a small group and so uh whether that be like a co-ed group a uh, young professional which has been our most uh uh, attended crew. And then of course we have a young married crew and we have a not so young married crew for the folks that are a little bit older. So we created an opportunity that whatever phase of life you're in, there's people that uh, can journey with you. And so what we do is we've taken the sermon from the week before and we basically break it down. So we have a discussion guide we provide for every group. Uh, they walk through that together because obviously on a, a Wednesday night, we can't break all of that down in an hour's time. But how do I put feet on my faith and how do I break this down to my daily life? OK, that was a great point in a sermon. But man, how do I apply that? And so through Cruz, we we get to disciple uh, those who are in our ministry. I'll tell you this too, Josiah. We just launched a um, discipleship track. We're calling it, you know, ironically, discovering discipleship. And uh, how crazy is that? But nonetheless, it's been this thing that 
man, so many people are loving getting to dissect their worldview. Why do I believe what I believe? Um, and what am I going to do with my faith? How am I going to? So we've been able to create an opportunity that uh, right now we've got about 40 people who are walking through that. And they're saying, I want to dissect my faith. I, I don't want to just say I believe something. Why do I believe it? And uh, God gave me a word this year as we leaned into 2022 uh, that God wanted us not to just go wider. He wanted us to go deeper. And so I'm encouraging, man, every leader listening right now, like go deeper. As you go deeper, uh, God will stretch your ministry wider as a result. And so we found that to be true through discipleship and crews um, for sure. I think that's so good. I was taking notes on when you said cruise, my mind went to like a cruise ship, like propelling forward. So I literally wrote the word cruise out and then you said it again. I was like, oh, it's probably C-R-E-W-S. Right. <laughs> but I mean, like if you, if you want to take it out of context, cruise, like a cruise ship does propel forward, right? And there are, there are people in place on that cruise ship to make the most of what you paid for in the event of whatever you're going. If you're going to go to the Bahamas, you got the food, you got the crew that's taking care of the cabins, you have the people running the ship itself and making sure that you are going the direction that you are going. And Pastor Kyle, like, I just think that that is what God has put you in charge of right now. Like you are the captain of the captain of the ship and you are developing the crew that is coming alongside you. That would be your volunteer teams. Those would be your worship leaders. Those would be your door holders, your, your sign holders, like who and whatever those people's responsibilities are. And the people who are just coming off the streets for the very first time of like, what in the world is this all about? Okay, you're the person who stepped free onto this boat, not knowing where it's gonna go and where we're gonna land. But let me let me tell you this, I'm a leader that's gonna take you somewhere. So when it comes to you casting vision, Pastor Kyle, this is not in our notes, by the way, if you're listening and I'm just, I don't know, maybe this is from God, I think it could be. But um, Pastor Kyle, I would just say like as a leader and when you are directing and you are empowering and you are taking people somewhere where God feel like you feel like God's asking you to go, how do you cast vision to your leadership team, to the people in your weekly rhythms of that uh, Wednesday night gathering? Like how have you found it most effective to be the leader that God's called you to be as you are on the captain of this cruise ship. I'll just continue with that analogy. And bring people on board. Yes, and how do you get those people like off the streets on board to be like, yes, I want to serve in the Big C Church. Yes, I want to be a discipleship leader someday. Yes, I need to be discipled myself. Like, how have you seen that encourage your heart or discourage? Like, how have you seen that evolve? Or what would you say, just any of that? I just spewed a lot of stuff at you. (laughs) No, it's good. I I hope I answer it uh, as well as you ask. Um, you know, for me, I think the best way to cast vision is to first lead by example. And so for me, it's like, I can't ask someone to be at crew night if I'm not at crew night, you know, I can't ask someone to serve in the church if I'm not serving on Sunday mornings. Yes, I'm on staff, but like I'm greeting at the door. I'm talking to people at the cafe. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm greeting as they're walking into the sanctuary. So it's those things that like, our leadership team that we have in place, we model what it is that we expect to happen in the lives of those that, that attend our ministry. And so okay. we're encouraging them, serve in the church. We're encouraging them, obviously, to attend um, as often as possible. You know, one one sad t- statistic I recently read was that most people only attend church once a month. Wow. And, I, and how, how in the world could you build anything off of just attending once a month? And yeah. so we encourage them to to be a part. So for me, as far as casting vision, we do uh, a monthly team gathering with our team and the way that that looked, here's my thing. I think, I think church people should have the most fun. Like they why, should. why is it that on is right. we gotta have the most we need to smile and have fun together? Yeah. Like smile, like have a good time. So when we get together, we're going to have a good time. So we're going to, um, there's going to be a game of some sort with our team. That's going to be out of this world. Like we made them eat horseradish and some random crazy things. The other time, uh, the last meeting we had, we did worship. Uh, of course, I think it's powerful when you can draw people in through a moment of worship together. Um, and then I, I share for about 15 minutes and then we break off into our teams and those, those team leaders, uh, they, they lead that time together. And so they're empowering their team. They're finding out how can we make what we do better? Mm -hmm. Uh, And how can I, leader, how can I give more encouragement and life to you? 
Um, and I think when people realize that we're pouring in, we're adding value to them as a person, they'll do anything for the ministry. They'll, they'll do anything for what it is that God's called us to do uh, and laid out before us. Why? Because it's adding value to them as they serve, as they come to crew, as they serve in the church. So that's, that's what's helped us. That's Bro, great. That's so good. And um, I know that you have a team of weekly volunteers, like you said, that are helping in, and there's a team leader. So there's a coach empowerment with them that they're actually leading their teams and, and, you know, really being an extension of the local church to a generation and an extension of your vision, extension of your ministry. And <clears throat> I happen to follow on Instagram, the one young adults, and I, <laughs> I follow a number of young adult ministries and what's crazy is like, you know, I'm careful even bringing this up because algorithms change all the time and I don't want to put a short shelf life on content or anything, but you guys at the moment are doing stories, mm -hmm. which is huge on Instagram. Reels are really growing. Um, there's, there's highlights so people can like check out, oh, there's devos and there's just a lot of ways that people can tap and be inspired and kind of mm. get a, a visual illustration of mm. like, oh, some like they're having fun there. Like, um, so if you're watching yeah. on YouTube, I keep finding different things and pulling it up or you're, you just did a sermon series on masterclass. And so like, there's a way for people to check it out. And, um, I know this is not in the notes either, but like, props to you and your church and the staff and the volunteer mm. team like there is incredible content being created every day every week and so like any thoughts on that for the person who is like yeah i know i gotta do instagram and maybe it's finding somebody gen z who can like speak mm. the language a little bit like i'm not adding another to-do list to anyone's plate but what does it look like for you um with I mean, even just that account of Instagram for V1 Young Adults. Yeah, for us, it's been crazy. Our, and I think it's been modeled from our church at large. You know, our lead pastors are keen about, hey, let's model what it is that's in-house on social media. It's the greatest platform for people to find out more about who we are and what they can experience when they come. So for us, it's so interesting. Um, we had a guy that came to one of our services when we were doing outdoor church. This was during the pandemic. We're doing um, uh, drive-in services. He comes in. I don't know him at all. He's sitting in the service. He's touched by the service in such a way that he says, he sends me a text later and says, hey, um, I want to serve. I don't care if I'm just picking up trash. Like, I, I want to do something in this ministry. And I find out as I stalk him, because we all do it, on social media, this guy takes photos. He does video. He does graphics. I'm like, I would never allow you to pick up trash, but I would totally <laughs> allow you to be part of my social media team. And so we we met and hung out. And man, that that guy is now on staff with us as our main creative uh, lead awesome. here at the church. Um, and he served for many, many, many months before he ever uh, was uh, on staff. And just a heart to say, how can I add value again? to this ministry. And I would encourage you, if you don't have someone like that, if obviously he found us, we didn't go looking for him, but we have gone looking uh, for people who can take photos, who can produce reels. Um, and the way we've found to be the best resource for that is our local colleges. Um, you, There are people studying this, they're going to school for this, they're majoring in this. They're looking to build their portfolio, to use their gifting, to add value again, so go to your local college and find these people, put it out there that, hey, we're looking. We're, and let me just let's say this, and, and maybe this um, is contrary to your values. And if it is totally you guys uh, that are listening, you don't have to do this. I'm okay if they're not a Christian, if they can take photos and they can do video. And here's why I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that, because I believe them being in the context, being in God's presence, being around the community, God's going to touch their heart. God's going to be the one, the Holy Spirit's going to be the one to draw them. And so for me, I want to be able to say, hey, just as much as you're adding value to us, we want to add value to your life as well. And ultimately, we've seen so people good. come to Christ as a result of doing it that way. And so uh, get out there and find these people because they're there. They're just waiting on the ask. That's amazing. And I think it's as a leader just to be reminded that we are not good at everything, right? Yeah. I totally. might be very passionate about one thing and Josiah may be like, 
I have zero passion there. Or the young adult comes to the door and they like have all this knowledge. Like we had some kids that were lead, not kids, young adults. They were 18. They were, they were young. But they were like, I can lead worship. I play guitar. And they're talking amps and hookups and like soundboards. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I'm yeah. like, can That's you play music? <laughs> yeah. God bless you because I, I can play the flute. That's all I know. I can read that music. <laughs> That's about it. I know nothing about anything else when it comes to what you're talking about. But they do bring value. And the, the thing that they're asking for is an invitation, right? Wow. Yeah. One invitation away. And I think sometimes as leaders, we want to invite them on our team. And I always say this. I told you, I was like, you know what? Every single person is one invitation away of accepting Christ. Yep. Every single person on this world is has an opportunity to say yes to Christ, but they may be one invitation away. So don't stop asking that young adult to attend. Don't stop asking this person to, you know, stop taking pictures, you know, because you never know what God can and will do in and through our ministry, quote unquote, that he's put us in charge of. Well, he should be leading it all, right? But yeah. really just recognizing like, wow, these young adults know more about X, Y, and Z than I probably ever will. So I want to lean into you and ask you a, probably a thousand questions that I'm not going to find anywhere else, but you're getting spurred on and you're getting encouraged and you're coming alive in areas that I feel completely drained and dead, right? Because I'm like, holy Toledo, I don't know. I don't know. And it's okay not to know, <laughs> yeah. but I'm willing to ask the questions. Did you have something you want to add, Kyle? You raised your eyebrows. You looked excited. I did, so... <laughs> So we have a guy um, right now who he's basically self teaching himself. So he's watching YouTube videos and he's learning Photoshop and he just has a hunger to learn. And so I believe anybody can learn if, if they have a passion for it, they can learn these skills, uh, finding a mentor. And so our creative guy here at the church who started at V1 Young Adults um, is now going to launch workshops here on our church campus. Amazing that from any ministry or in even people outside of our church, if they want to learn this stuff, he's going to offer uh, his expertise and train these people. And I just think that's a beautiful thing that he's giving back to somebody, uh, to a church and to other people that have given to him so much. And I, if you want to learn, there's so many resources out there. And so um, empower your people, send them to a conference, uh, pair them up with a mentor on staff, find a way because I'm telling you, it'll pay off dividends for your ministry. And we found out so many people found us through social media. Every single week when we meet first time guests, we ask, how'd you find out about us? And the number one response has been through social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's worth taking note. And we're honestly, as pastors, leaders, directors, maybe of a ministry, we are not manipulative. Yeah, We are leaders of invitation. And what mm -hmm. that means is we can't control outcomes, any of us, right. but we can provide opportunities. And I think mm -hmm. that one of the most underrated skills is the ask, mm -hmm. is the yeah. invite. And so to go back to that, just from one more angle, is just to recognize that I think a lot of times in the church culture, it can be like, oh, can I get a pulpit announcement? Can I make this announcement from the stage? And that there's a place for that. That's mm -hmm. an effective way of communicating. I found that even more effective is the personal invitation, whether it's to an event, mm -hmm. whether it's to become a member of a church, whether it's, have you been water baptized? And like, just come always, sit with me. Yes. <laughs> Let me yes. sit with oh you. Oh my gosh. I never want to <laughs> underestimate any single invitation mm -hmm. and I think that sometimes it's always thinking through like what's their next step what's the next thing that I could invite them to how mm -hmm. am I helping them grow as a disciple as a Christ follower and um, our invitation now to you Ooh, here we go Kyle, is the five and five five final thoughts five final questions in the last five minutes as we throw up five minutes up on the clock you ready I'm ready man. let's go okay first one is Micah talked about hobbies and friends. Can you name a friend and can you name a hobby that are both outside of ministry right now? Wow. Yeah. So I have a friend named Brandon McDaniel who we talk probably weekly. Uh, he's outside of my church context and uh, we can just be raw and open and real with each other. And it's been one of the most life-giving relationships for me. Um, as far as hobbies, my wife and I, we just bought a Traeger grill smoker and it's been like so fun like getting to cook together 
Um, by the way, I'm not a good cook. She is. And so I'm learning, not her. She's got it mastered. Um, <laughs> but it's been so much fun. Yeah. Getting to do that together. I love it. Okay. Question number two, what are you looking forward to in the near future? It can be any so I, yeah, so I just made the decision yesterday, uh, to pursue my doctorate and I am excited about it. Uh, don't know where figuring all the details out right now, but that's what I'm most excited about is, uh, I'm finishing my master's in May and then going to move on to the doctorate. I'm super pumped. Yeah. It's oh amazing. My gosh, what a what a journey. That's incredible. Hey, along the journey, what's your favorite go to road trip snack? Um, probably Mike and Ike's port rinds and Skittles and Swedish fish. That's sad that I know it and can say it that fast. But <laughs> <laughs> I know what I like and I know what I need to take, you know? So it's yep. packed in his lunch right now, everybody. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, question number four. Here's the curveball. If you could ask Josiah and myself a question today. Any question under the sun, what would you ask us? How have you guys sustained yourself personally Hmm. in ministry? And and so obviously we've experienced revival in our ministries, but how are you guys um, experiencing personal revival? Oh, man, that's a great question. Do you want to go first? You can go first this time. Okay. Um, I think every person needs an outlet and something that's going to rejuvenate them. And for me personally... Um, it was exercise for the longest time, which I still value, but having two babies in 16 months and two C-sections has been a recovery. So aside Mm -hmm. from that one, I would say I love to create. I love to paint. I love to refurbish furniture. I needed an outlet. And I think that that's, my mind doesn't shut off. Like HGTV is on in my head all the time of like, how can I make this room better? How can I work with this angle? I'm, oh my gosh, that tape and texture looks horrendous. Like I'm literally looking in my corner right now. I'm like, who did that? So I mean, <laughs> literally like to have an outlet outside of ministry that doesn't include Josiah, I'm sorry to say that you need something outside of your spouse that you can enjoy and do. Um, and that's mine is just to make some, find something that's old, ugly, that nobody else wants at a thrift store and make it something beautiful and restore it. Um, and I guess we see that in the church all the time with our own personal stories and seeing other people's stories revived too. So to see that revive and revitalization of a home or an object just brings life to me. And I absolutely love that. So that's how I've been able to sustain um, just an out, outlet outside of ministry. Hmm. So wow. that's a non-spiritual answer. Yeah. <laughs> you could say probably reading the Bible every day. I don't know what you're going to go with. <laughs> um, it's all part of the process. I'm a person who, like, I've been inspired by Rebecca Lyons. Mm. She had this piece where she talked about input rhythms and then output rhythms and how, like, um, mm. rest and restoration is both input and output. Like, creating something for Micah as a, re- you know what, I'm going to refurbish this table or this piece of furniture. That's an output rhythm, mm-hmm. but it, it's it's restoration to her soul. So I agree with both sides of that. For me, input rhythms are, you know what, like worship music, um, journaling, the disciplines, like quiet time, soap, reading the Bible, podcasts, listening to messages, reading books, reading old dead guys, like input rhythms is definitely taking stuff in. And then um, I think as well, like there's a output rhythm for me of exercise, like running, Mm -hmm. or maybe it's weight room at the gym, but just different little things that are input rhythms and output rhythms of how am I investing into my cup? If I just Mm -hmm. drank this and my cup's empty, how am I going to rejuvenate or recharge or refill? Those are a few of the ways. Mm -hmm. And then honestly, output rhythm wise too, like creating content for me, podcasting, writing, blogs, books, resources. Um, For me, the, it might be a little bit more that way as far as creating, sharing what I'm learning with others, but the input uh, rhythms and output rhythms. And uh, I think the other thing that I didn't mention is just like having a meal with friends Mm -hmm. or um, yeah, like getting together with a couple buddies. Like I think that those things are so good for the soul. Right. Um, I find a lot of enjoyment in that. Yeah. Great question. Long answer, but hey, we try. Oh, it's good. (laughs) I feel like I should go run and restore a piece of furniture now. So I'm pumped. Let's do it. And eat Chick-fil-A. We'll send it to you. Yeah. Uh, Gosh, 
Kyle, such a fun conversation. And if you had to close things out and we handed you the microphone and there was a room filled with college pastors, young adult ministry leaders, mm-hmm. and just young leaders in general, and you could give them one piece of advice or encouragement, what would you share with them? Yeah, I, I would borrow this from our, our recent series, Masterclass, simply this, master the moment that you're in. Realize that you can only do what you can do where you are with what you have. And so maximize the resources you have, obviously as the, the people that God has placed around you to do life with them, but also to mm-hmm. help them fulfill their purpose. I feel like if you're a leader, the greatest way for you to experience personal fulfillment is to help someone else fulfill their dream. Wow. And so the people that you're leading, the people that you uh, have been given stewardship over, empower them and help them to fulfill their purpose and their calling. So maximize the moment. Like, um, that God's placed you in, in this season. I love it. Well, that is a challenging thing to leave me on personally. And hopefully the listener, maybe even you, Josiah is to learn how to master the moment. I think being a parent, being a leader, being a pastor, being an, a wife, a spouse, an individual in general, we can wish those moments away, right? And we don't want to wish our life away. We want to embrace what God has put in our hands and not let it fall through. And, uh, so we just want to give God the glory in that. And pastor Kyle, we are so thrilled that you were able to join us today. So thank you so much for this amazing conversation. Thank you guys so much. For sure. You're a blessing, bro. And if you guys want to find out more about V1 Young Adults, Kyle Sawyer, and you know, just stay tuned to his journey, you can definitely do that. Mm-hmm. We'll tag him in Instagram. We'll tag him in the show notes as well as on www.youngadults.today. So until next time, this is Josiah and Micah signing off. Talk soon, guys.